But these are the pangs of labor, my dear boy. You have something within you which you are bringing to the birth. I do not know, Socrates. I only say what I feel. Well, have you not heard, Simpleton, that I am the son of a midwife? Yes, I have. And that I myself practice midwifery? No, never. Well, let me tell you that it is so. But I must ask you never to reveal the secret, for the world in general has not yet found me out. <laughs> Therefore they say of me that I am the strangest of mortals, and that I drive men to their wit's end. Have you not heard this too? Uh, yes, I have heard that. And shall I tell you the reason? By all means. Bear in mind the whole business of the midwives, and then you will understand my meaning better. Now it is true, is it not, that the midwives know better than others who is pregnant and who is not. Yes, it is. Very true. And by the use of potions and incantations, they are able to rouse the pangs of birth and soothe them at will. They can make those bear who have difficulty in bearing. They can. Their task, then, is a very important one. But it is not as important as mine. For women cannot bring into the world at one time real children and at another time counterfeits. If they did, then the discernment of the true and false would be the crowning achievement of the art of midwifery. Would you not say so? Indeed I should. Well, the art of my midwifery is in many respects like theirs. It differs in that I attend men and not women. I look after their souls when they are in labor, and not their bodies. And the triumph of my art is in thoroughly examining whether the thought which the mind of a young man brings forth is a false idol or a noble and true birth. 